Hi everybody. I uh, just threw some ram's horn snails in my puffer tank and we are going to get to watch him munch down on some ram's horns while I talk about the importance of keeping brackish fish in brackish water. Now I'm calling them brackish fish for the moment but as I will explain that's not what they actually are called. The environment they live in is brackish. The fish themselves are considered to be urihaline. Now, urihaline means wide range of salinity, and you will often see these fish sold and marketed as freshwater fish. Um, and, you know, they can live in freshwater, and the name urihaline suggests since they can live in a wide range of salinity, why not simply keep them in freshwater since they can live in it? So, I want to explain why it's important that some fish stay in brackish water. There are two types of urihaline animals. One is the type we are looking at that live in a sort of constant environment in the real world. Now their environment might be a bay or an estuary where the salinity fluctuates throughout the day as the tides come in or out or you've got heavier rains or lighter rains. So the animal will go through fluctuations in salinity which is why they need to be a urihaline animal. They need to be able to adapt readily to these changing environments. But they're still in a more or less overall constant. They live in the same bay or the same estuary for their entire lives. The other type of urihaline animal is like certain catfish or salmon that start out in freshwater and as they age they go through increasing salinity until adulthood they are actually out in full marine water. So I want to talk about the kinds of animals like the puffer here we're looking at that more or less needs to stay in a constant, uh, stable environment within reason. Now again, if I ran out of marine salts and I had to do a water change and do fresh water, he could do just fine in that. He could live in fresh water for quite a while. So what it all boils down to is an animal's ability to osmoregulate. Now what osmoregulation is, is the ability of an animal by movement of water in and out of its cells to maintain the salinity inside its cells that it needs to be healthy. We all have salt in our body, you know our sweat is salty, we have to have salts in our body to live. Well so do fish and urihaline animals are able to adapt to varying degrees of salt in their environment. A stenohaline animal, uh, like most freshwater fish and saltwater fish, they have to stay in a very narrow range of salinity. And the reason is they have evolved to work with the certain amount of salt. Let's say you've got a marine animal. Their bodies are equipped to deal with getting rid of a lot of salt because their internal salinity is lower than that of the salt water so they're they're going to have a tendency to dehydrate because of all that salt I know that sounds silly that a fish will dehydrate but the higher salt in the water will affect their body so they have to actually get rid of salt readily if you put them in fresh water they, they're still going to be able to readily get rid of salt, but they don't have the capacity to uptake salt. So they actually run out. They don't have the salt that they need. Freshwater fish are the other way around. They have a tremendous ability to uptake tiny amounts of salts out of the water they're in through their gills, and in turn, they dump out tremendous amounts of very, very dilute urine because they're running water through their body rapidly in order to pick out the little bit of salt they need. Urihaline animals can do either or. It just depends on the environment they have. And different animals have different mechanisms of doing this. Uh, I'm not even really 100% clear on all the biology that goes on with how all of that works. But these animals have a way, if they get into water that's saltier than the inside of their cells, they have a way to express the salt rapidly so they maintain their body's internal salinity. If you put them in fresh water, they have the capacity to hang on to their salt, and like freshwater fish, they can draw salts out of the water and maintain it in their body. So why then, again, do we need to keep them in a certain sort of brackish, middle-of-the-road salinity? The reason is, 
their internal salinity. They have a set internal salinity and they have to maintain that. So if you put them to one extreme or the other, say you put them in fresh water, they still are attempting to maintain an internal salinity and they have to work to do this. So the longer they stay in water that doesn't have any salts in it or very, very trace amounts of salts in it, the more wear and tear you're putting on their kidneys and their gills and all the other biological functions involved in extracting salts from fresh water. And it just wears them out and they can't do that for long periods of time. Most fresh water or most uh, puffers that are kept in fresh water as far as I can tell, maybe two or three years is considered to be a long-lived fish if they're kept in fresh water, and a lot of them don't even make it that long. They should live 15, 18 years, no problem, if you've got them in the proper salinity. So if you keep them in low-end brackish, which is usually considered for these figure eight puffers here and these bumblebee gobies, between 1.005 and 1.008 is ideal. Again, if you're a little lower than that or if you go a little higher than that, the fish is going to be able to adapt, it's not going to be that big a deal, but that salinity, that specific gravity of the water is what allows the fish to function biologically with the most ease. It's not stressing the animal trying to maintain its internal salinity because the water is right where it needs to be. It's not an animal that's working and struggling to keep its body, it's, it's the term is homeostasis where everything is in balance. That takes more effort. If I was to put him in slightly less brackish water, he would still maintain homeostasis, but it would require more effort to do so. Now, this might not be physical effort, um, sort of like if you drink alcohol, your, your liver and your kidneys are getting banged on as it's processing and breaking down the toxins and all that stuff. It's nothing you're actively doing. You don't have to think about the process. It's not tiring you out but it is putting wear and tear on your body. It is beating you up internally slowly. And the same thing happens with puffers or any fish that's taken out of its, you know, where it should be. And again, I'm talking about urihaline animals, not stenohaline animals. A stenohaline animal, again, being an animal that has to stay in a certain type of water. Take um, African cichlids are a perfect example. They can't even live in moderately soft water for the most part they suffer pretty rapidly and they don't live very long and they don't look very good and you don't get the colors on them they need to be in a water that has certain dissolved solids in it and certain amounts of those dissolved solids in it because that's what they need to match what is internal cellularly in their body. They evolved in water that had those minerals in it. Their internal organs have those minerals and those needs in it. So if you put them in water that doesn't have those minerals, they have no way to get them. So a puffer, and again, we're not talking about those minerals necessarily, but a puffer can get them if he's in fresh water, and he can expel them if he's in salt water and he's getting too much of them come in, but there's a biological cost to it. It wears them out and it just puts wear and tear on their body, and slowly but surely you will kill your, again, I'll call it your brackish fish if you keep it in strictly fresh water. So if you've got one and it was sold to you as a freshwater fish and now you're getting all worried, don't panic. You don't have to rush them out and set up a brackish tank tomorrow. But start doing your research. I've got a whole uh, channel here and a whole playlist here on the brackish tank. I've got lots of videos about how to set up brackish water and how to mix it up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but look into it and, you know, if you can or it's not something you're willing to do or you don't want to set up a brackish tank, you know, be honest with yourself and then maybe decide whether or not this is the right fish for you to keep or not. They're really amazing fish. Uh, it's the whole reason I have a brackish tank. I fell in love with these puffers when I first saw them and I just decided that's all there is to it. I'm going to set up a brackish tank. I also live in a part of the world. I'm very close to the Chesapeake Bay, which is, the, I think, the world's largest uh, brackish estuary. Uh, so I've just grown up around animals that can move in and out of rivers and into the bay and then out into the ocean. And so I've always been around brackish environments and always found them that that sort of marginal environment has always been sort of fascinating to me. It's not really one or the other and it's its own unique sort of ecosystem uh, and biology that goes into that, whether it be the plants or the animals uh, or anything else. 
So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up. He's still working on those uh, snails. He'll be cruising around the whole rest of the night. That one snail's got its uh, meat you know, pulled really far up inside the shell, and he's having a hard time getting to it. So that'll give him a lot of activity and something to work on throughout the rest of the evening. My battery is about to die, so I will continue this discussion as always about uh, brackish water and all the water chemistry that goes on behind it and everything else. So make sure you're subscribed, that way you won't miss any of it. And I thank you for watching this one. I'll see you real soon on the next one.